That's the face. What? Huh? What? Three, two, one, bro. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike. Hey, everybody, I'm Nick. <laughs> We're underrated, <laughs> just like the games we're talking about. I don't know. We're an underrated channel. Subscribe today. Right Please now. Uh, no, we're going to be talking about underrated games. Yeah. We're the Brothers Murph, by the way. We are the Brothers we Murph. Are. We are going to be talking about some underrated games. So I did an understated intro. There you go. Those it's are nice. related things, but yeah. they sound similar. Everyone, I feel like, has those games. You're like, man, I'm the only one who likes this game. But this game doesn't get enough appreciation. And we've done one of these lists uh, way, way in the past. And so we wanted to kind of do it again, because there's a ton of games that we're just like, and I always feel like we constantly are talking about games that like no one else is ever talking about. So I'm just like, let's let's highlight some of those games. Now, this list could have been like 20, 20 30, lists. 40 games long. Yeah. So like we have 20 right here. We're not talking about we 20. literally have 20. So we're only gonna do 10. But it, let's say if we this video gets like a thousand likes, Get we'll do a up. part two. Right? Yeah. So get so, some thumbs up if you like this topic and want to see us do a continuation. Why not, right? Thumb this video Put a little up. challenge out to the, we'll see if, to the people. We'll gauge the interest. Put a yeah. challenge out. You bet you're not down. You bet you're not down. Bet you're not down. But yeah, so then we'll do a part two because we could do a part three and four. And f there's a there's lot of games so that I'm like, no one plays this enough. In a world with so many games, there's undoubtedly games that oh, yeah. you feel like don't get talked about enough. Yeah. It's a very subjective oh, of course, uh, yeah. kind of topic, of course. And these are just games that we enjoy that we think aren't talked about enough. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're rated too low on Board Game Geek. Some of them are rated just fine, but we still, even with that, we're like, but they're not they're not in the zeitgeist yeah. enough. People don't mention them enough in our eyes. So that's what we're going to be talking about, is games that we feel like don't get quite enough love because they're really solid. Yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead and get our number 10. So number 10 is a game from Haba. Haba, uh, they do obviously children's games and they do a kind of family weight. So it's kind of like a level up for Haba. Yeah. And a lot of times I feel like those games get kind of Really, they fall under the radar. Choose like any family way hobby game, and it could be on those lists. Yes. They're always great, and, and they always one, kind of I feel like never get enough recognition. Yeah, this one is uh, Miyabi, which is a Michael Kiesling game yeah. who famously made Azul, yeah. like and like a billion other games. Yeah, yeah. so many huge games, uh, and this is a game that is a kind of a spatial puzzle game where you're building out a beautiful garden. Uh, and you are placing tiles out, and each kind of uh, row of your garden has a different feature that it can have. Yeah. One can have koi ponds, one can have stones and different types of bushes, and they can you can't mix and match those things. But you have these kind of cool uh, polyomino shapes uh, that are mostly showing grass and then one feature. And what you can do is you can basically build out a foundation and then stack things onto yeah. the second and third level, kind of like number nine, yeah. where now if I'm putting a stone, if it's on the second or third level, it's, it's worth more triple points, yeah. points or double points. And so you can kind of, you need to build out and then up strategically and so it's a really good game that i'm like this has all the makings of kind of like a lot of those abstract spatial puzzle tile mm -hmm. laying games um but just for whatever reason seems like it kind of went under the radar yeah and it's very odd it's, given who made it and how it looks and stuff yeah and it's it's really really cool it's got a lot of like restrictions to the game in terms of mm -hmm. like the game restricts you in a lot of different ways but it's a very good restriction where yeah. it just makes it a very interesting intriguing puzzle yeah and, it's, and there's it's like different really modules fun. you can put on it to just change yeah. the game ever so slightly we actually did game did a game house episode right. on it uh, that i think really shows it off well um and it's just a game that we the first time we played it we're kind of like huh, all right and then we play a game, we're like, huh. And then now yeah. I'm like, this is a really it's solid really game. Good. Yeah, so, it is. Yeah, for whatever reason, didn't seem to, to pop off. Ow. Uh, you all right? Yeah. Be careful now. But that's Miyabi, our number 10. So let's get into number nine. Our number nine is a, a kind of a big, cool looking game with like really cool art and like great minis and stuff and, and kind of went under the radar again. And that's a uh, Sanctum by CGE. Sanctum damn near killed him. I know, right? This is made by the same person who made like Adrenaline and these kinds of games who yeah. always takes like, kind of like a marathon game. game, a video game type things. And then, but makes them into like Euro games, essentially. Yeah. Like Adrenaline is like a first person a shooter. specific life mission. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very cool thing. So then this person took kind of like the Doom you're uh, hitting things and they explode into loot kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, Diablo, basically. Diablo, you're not going Doom, through, yeah. You're going through uh, these rooms. Similar kind of art style and stuff like that. And yeah, and mm -hmm. like, and, but turn it into like essentially a resource management Euro game. Yeah. And it's really, really fun. You're essentially going up these big like kind of vertical boards, going up and you're fighting these demons. And whenever you defeat a demon, it flips over, the card flips over, and then it's a kind of loot. Different boots, weapons, 
hats, armor, yeah. and you're you're outfitting your person. Yeah, and each time you equip something, it gives you more and more mitigation of dice rolls yes. and things and the ways to defend yourself. Yeah, so like these particular gauntlets might allow you to um, increase or decrease the die value you roll by like one or two. And so you're kind of exhausting these things as you go. But then as you also defeat demons, you have essentially kind of like a little tech tree on yeah. the right side of your board. And as you defeat demons, you're getting to move these like gems up and down, up this track. And as you unlock things, you then get those special abilities. You're essentially getting better and better and better. Yeah. It's super cool. And then at the very end, what's kind of cool is the entire thing is you essentially just getting ready for the final fight. Yeah, you're getting all the your, very your end, loot together for the, you're building your kit for the boss battle. Yeah, for the big boss, like this big Balrog looking thing. The boss fight is like super, super hard. Everyone's going through it. It's really difficult. You're so essentially- to survive it basically. Yeah, and then if, if, if multiple people survive, then whoever has the most health actually wins the game. So it's literally like everyone's just trying to kit themselves out to fight the boss at the very end. And it's a really cool take on a game that like it's got great art, looks really well, it's actually pretty simple and just went right under the radar. And and it was, it's a real big, it's a real bummer because yeah. I think it's a really cool I, game. I think they're coming out with a version or maybe they have where you can play it co-op. I think there's which an expansion, I think, yeah. I think would help the game. Yes. Because uh, that's one thing, like you're not really interacting with each other it's as you're playing competitively. Solitary, yeah. So it'd be cool to be like, let's gear up together to take on this yeah. like, super big boss. I think that would make the game like even cooler and maybe yeah. more appealing. Because even at know. the very last boss fight, it's like, you're not fighting against each other, and it's just it, you're all doing your own individual yeah, battle. Yeah, all the people who won, whoever's most health, that person won. So we're always kind of like everyone wins if you beat the boss, and then it's yeah. like we'll figure out the winner after that. But it's kind of like everyone wins, whoever yeah. does. So really cool game though. That yeah, just for whatever reason, just didn't. I mean, and didn't seem to hit very much, you know. So I, I wish it Go did because it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool. That's number nine, Sanctum. It's getting a break. So number eight is uh, the kind of party game deduction game for us. Yeah, uh, this it's probably is, my favorite party game. This, this is point, Detective yeah. Club. So this is a, a blue orange game so where uh, you are trying to root out a traitor like you do in a lot of these types of games, but you're doing this using uh, cards that kind of have like just trippy art a la Dixit or Mysterium, where it's just really great as usual. Uh, it's made by this whole team of artists and stuff. These great cards that just have wacky, strange, Super surreal, surreal yeah. uh, drawings on them. And what you're gonna do is if I'm the kind of lead detective, I'm gonna choose, based off of cards I have, a one word clue, and I'm gonna write it down on pads of paper for everybody but one. Then we shuffle those up, we deal them out, so it means everybody has the clue, except for, except one, for person. one person. And then everyone who is a detective is simply gonna try to play cards that prove that they know the clue. Yes, yeah, so the clue is like boot. Then I'm like, yeah, oh, this, this one has like shoes boots. on it. Not boots, but this but card has shoes on it. I'll put this one down. Yeah. Right. And then meanwhile, there's going to be a person who does not know what the clue is, and they're going to try to blend in. And the reason we like it so much, and we've talked a lot about it, is that unlike so many so so social deduction games, seemingly, the person who's trying to hide has something to go on. Yes. And they have a pretty natural way to blend in. Yes. Because in this game, and I think the best social deduction games are ones where everybody's gonna look suspicious yes. and everybody's gonna look innocent at the yeah. same time. And so in this one, if you're the, the traitor, you're seeing what people are playing. And so you're like, there's a lot of water on these cards. Yeah, maybe I should put Maybe on a this has something to do with water. I'll put this. And then we go around. And then the best brilliant little twist is before you start interviewing basically everyone to say, explain your cards and why you're not, you know, the the the, the one who doesn't belong. You'd say what the clue is. The clue was frog. Oh, that's why there's water. Okay, that's interesting. And so now if you're the trader, you have at least a split second to say like, how do I make this make sense for frogs? Okay. But it's cool because all the cards sort of make sense and they yeah. definitely also do not make and sense. And you can know the clue and just have no yeah, cards. cards that work. Right. And it makes you look suspicious. Whereas the other person can be like, okay, I'm seeing water. I'm gonna put down this water. And that one happens to have a frog yeah. on it. And then you're like, oh, frog. Okay, look, there's a frog. Easy. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it's really good. And so I think it's easier, especially because for some games, and I think I fall into this, like not everyone just likes lying. Yeah. And some games are just built social deduction. You're just like, you just get to lie because it's fun. Lie like, some the people best. don't like that. And some people don't yeah. do that well. So here it's like, you can put the focus on the cards yes. and why the card makes sense. So you have a natural pathway. And that just like smooths out so many rough edges, I feel like. And, yeah. you, and it allows for all of the normal social deduction. You look suspicious, that card's weird. You have all that stuff still, and then kind of just a nice little ease. Yeah. It smooths everything over. Everyone looks a little suspicious. Everyone can also talk their way out of yeah. guilt, uh, potentially. And that's why it's our it's favorite so good. 
social deduction game. So good. I think it's us and, and Tom Vassell. And the art Vassel is fantastic. Are the only ones who talk about this game. Yeah. Because I know Tom really likes it too. He loves it. And I'm just like, I think it's, I feel like it's so us brilliant. three and that's it. And, and it's like, so good. I, I could never play The Resistance ever again in my life. And Spy, that's fine. Spy Fall or whatever. Like, dead. Spy. Detective Club. All yeah. day. Should be talked about more. And that's why it's number that's eight. Great. Let's get number seven. Sorry, I forgot. Number seven is a one that was, I believe, was on game. our list last time. And it's still this darn good, and that is Pagoda. I dare say I like it more now. Yeah, I like I like Pagoda more and more and more. Hey, this is a great two-player only game by AEG, and you are building pagodas, which are those very tall, very kind of skinny buildings you see in like Southeast Asia really a lot. Ornate, beautiful, really, really gorgeous buildings. In this game, you're putting out pillars of different colors, like purple, red, blue, green, those kinds of things, and then you're putting on floor tiles and then building um, columns on top of that, and then floor tiles and columns on top of that. So it actually has a little bit of a 3D element, which is cool. Yeah, it's fun. And so you're playing out these cards and you, you play a green card, that means you can put a green pillar out. You play a green card, you can put a green roof out as long as there's four pillars for the roof to stand on. And you are essentially trying to make these pagodas and basically how it is, is if you're playing, putting out columns on the ground floor, they're each gonna be worth one point each. But then if you're putting them on the second floor, they're each worth two points each, then three points each, then yeah. four points as each. As you build, more and more valuable. Yeah, and then after the fourth floor, then you have to put an actual roof on it. And it's, and it's great, and so the whole game is just, you try to get the points while trying to not set up your opponent. The worst thing I could do is like fill out columns on row three and then put a roof and put a floor on it and just yeah, leave that next floor for Mike to be like, okay, I'll just put columns up there. Yeah. So you're constantly trying to essentially get your opponent to set you up. And, and, yeah. and it's a really, really fun game. And then every time you build one of the floors, you get a special power. And those special powers allow you to like switch things in and out. You can like discard cards and redraw cards, just little powers here and there. And it just... It works so well. It just is so smooth. It's so cool looking. It's so simple. It's Turns two player are only. Easy. You score every turn, so you feel like you're always doing yeah. something. There's it's never just a wasted great. moment. It's so good, and no one talks about it. <laughs> I don't know why. I really don't know why. This I, should be one of the one of the most talked about two player games. It's been out for a I while, agree. and it's nothing. I agree. It looks it looks great. I'd love to see like a new printing come out with uh, a little bit more uh, color color friendly. blind friendly stuff would be That's great. The only downside, and it is a knock, is that all the pillars are the exact same cylindrical shapes. Partially because you do need to make it st yeah. st stable, like you need to build it, but. There's no differenti differentiation between the colors, and the colors are not that different. No, like the purple, um, I played this with uh, my roommate, and, and who's very, who's, he suffers from colorblind, this pretty darn colorblind, and we, we couldn't play it. We couldn't finish the game, yeah. I don't think, because he is like, I can't tell any of the pillars apart. Yeah, so that's, that is a knock against it, but yeah. it is such a good game beyond that point. Uh, that I feel like it's it's good enough to get that reprinting so you can make a, yeah, it, uh, yeah it's just bizarre. It's yeah. a good theme, it's beautiful. Easy to understand, but tactical. It's yeah, great. I don't know. It's we like so it. good. Pagoda is so We're so fans. good. Try it out if you find it at a con or a game right, cafe yeah. or something like that. Give it a shot. It's really really great two player game. Really wonderful. So That's good. number seven. Pagoda, number six. Number six was high up on our list last time, and we still like it so much, and we think it's still underrated. It's history -o. We're still we're not, we're talking about this game. We have got several people to buy this game. We've probably real talk gotten. We're very proud of that. 25, 30 people to buy this game. Very excited. Hopefully, at least ten of you don't regret that purchase. Hopefully, but we think it's good. And now these days, you can usually catch it on sale places because it just it never did not wear the newest well. game. Yeah, either. yeah, it's really not. This is a point. cool game. It's a fantastic simultaneous action, or not simultaneous action selection, but simultaneous selection game. Yeah where you are trying to recruit uh, actors. You're trying to recruit uh, comedians and tragedians and, and acrobats uh, to be a part of your, your acting troupe to put on a play for the king. Yep. And the king's mood switches from wanting a comedy to a tragedy, back to comedy and back and forth all the time. So you're trying to, at the end of the round, the season, have the right kind of play. Meaning if you have more comedians, you have put on a comedy. If you have a lot more tragedians or tragedians or whatever it's supposed to be. You have a tragedy. You, and you have these acrobats that have like once per season abilities. Yep. And so the whole game comes down to, I'm going to try to go to one of eight locations where there's going to be actors and acrobats. And if I'm the only one who goes there, I get everything that's at that location. Yep. If multiple people go, no one gets anything, but we get a secret objective and stuff. So you're just trying to like do that, that great mind game of like, I'll bet they're going to three because they've got a lot of comedians yeah. They're going to want to get one more to get the bonus at the end of the season. They're going there. If that person wants that acrobat, they're going to seven. I'm going to six. And then all of us have had those thoughts. Where we're like, no one's going to six. And then everyone goes yeah. to six. And like that kind of thing is just very fun. Yeah. And this game is something that is so simple to get into and understand. And it's such a beautiful production yes. from, uh, 
from Bombix yeah. that uh, it just works really well. It's beautifully colorful with the, your acting troupe is all anthropomorphized animals and you can play five people and it's really great with, with higher player counts because it just gets chaotic with trying to go somewhere where no one else is going. Yeah. So it's just one of those games that we think is like beautifully simple and just looks great yeah. and has never gotten the love it deserves. So that's no. why it's still on the list because we still, still think it's we'll underrated. Still, we'll evangelize this game forever. It's just, it's, yeah. so good. it's not going to all of a sudden get more popular now. No, so we have, we're the only not. ones keeping it alive. I don't think they're reprinting it. Yeah, Probably not. Probably <laughs> it's not. not the newest game, but that's number six, Histrio. All right, let's get to number five. Number five is also a game that we've talked about many, many times. Us and Crystal Dax are the only ones talking about this game, I feel like. And that is Castell. Castell is a great Renegade game. You knew it was coming. Yeah, you knew it was coming. You know us. Castell is on there. Castell is a great game where you are uh, a, a group of Castellers. Castellers are people who build those build those um, big human pyramids in, in like the... Like um, giant human pyramids. Yeah, like really, really Scarily big. Like high. In the Catalonia region of Spain, and it's, it's a very rich tradition of that, and this game is just baked into that. And so you're going around the Catalon uh, Catalonian part of Spain, and you're getting new Castellers to join your troop, and they're putting on performances in these different cities. Yeah. And then you have the Castellers, and they, they go from different sizes. So like the tens and the nines are like big burly people who are like on the bottom of the tower, and you're building it up in these big pyramids. What I love about this game is that you have all of these restrictions. Like you can only have it be so anything. tall. You can only have it be so high. You can only do this and this and this. But then you can go and train in all these different parts of building these pyramids. And you essentially can then start to break all of those rules. And it just makes you can build these bigger and bigger and bigger pyramids. And they're just so awesome. And it just works really, really well. And it's this very tight puzzle of a game yeah. that is brain burning and just works so, so well. And again, it kind of came out, and we immediately were like, what is that? That yeah. looks so cool. And, and just, it did hit for a minute. For a second, yeah. When it first came out, we saw, and we've talked about this before, we saw a thousand and one people. You can put this giant bag yes. and wear it like a hat. And we saw a thousand and one of those pictures, which was great because it made me go, what is this yes. thing that people put on their head? And then we got to play it, and then I feel like the second we played it, everyone said, no, that's enough of that. And you're like, no, it's not just, did it, did people just wear it as a hat and not I play know, the right? game? Right? Like, are you not seeing the Feels game like yet? that a little bit. The game is great. It's so weird. It's so good. I mean, it really is. We yeah. absolutely adore it. And yeah, it just seemed to float. Like a lot of Renegade games, they just, it, Renegade games is one of our favorite companies. And a lot of times it just kind of flows under the radar and it's just, yeah, I don't know. Castell is yeah. great, though. We absolutely adore it. Yeah. It's one of those perfect, perfect information games. Yes. There's no surprises in the game. You know exactly what you can do. You know exactly what goals you're going to try to do. Where you're going to go, yeah. And it's about making that you can happen. do the best, yeah. Yeah, the only thing you don't know is which Castell is going to come out throughout the game. That's really the only That's question it. mark, yeah. which is very cool. So Castell is one we really love. You're trying to build awesome human pyramids. Great theme. I love the color in this game. Yeah, the it's a very pastel. It's gorgeous. Like, there's just so much to love here. Uh, we will continue to talk about it till the end of time. Yeah, but uh, Castel true. is our number five. It's great. Let's get a number four. So last time we did an underrated list, we had a game called Last Will. It's true. Which is a, a silly game where you're trying to be a bad person and, and get all the money from a will by basically being the, yeah. trying to be the poorest person. Yeah so that you get all the inheritance. So this is a sequel to this game that could actually be played with Last Will. It's called Prodigal's Club. Nick, do you like Prodigal's Club? I do. It was my second favorite game, uh, according nice. to our last Top 100 list. Yeah, and it probably and still it is, honestly. Yeah, Prodigal's Club is fantastic. Now here, you are not only trying to get poor by selling off all of your possessions for as little money as you can, Yeah. you are also trying to lose an election, and you're trying to lose all of your friends because you're, you're, you're too person. highfalutin in the yeah, social circles. Too highfalutin. And this one, I don't know why necessarily you're trying to do these things, but you just the are theme makes less in. sense in the second one, but it's also more fun. Yeah, you're just <laughs> leaning into like maybe in the first one last week you're like, I kind of like slumming it like this. Yeah. I like being just frivolous with my cash. Let's keep this train going. Yeah, why not? Uh, and so you're trying to like literally, it's the idea of like the reverse of a normal game yeah. where you're trying to score points up here. It's like you were trying to literally score as few points as possible yeah. because the highest points you have among the three areas, that's your score For and the, the lowest yeah. score wins. So you really need to You want zero balance. in all of them, yeah. Yeah, and be horrible in all these things. And it's just something that will forever, I think, intrigue us. Yeah. The idea of like, you need to be as bad as possible. Yeah. It's just the theme is so, so much fun and like all the cards you get, you're like, you're going yeah. to a restaurant. You like, you like are being mean to the waiter at the restaurant. That makes you lose social points. So people like you less. You're, yeah. You have those social things that are going down. It's just great. And then on top of the really fun theme, 
is a, a pretty heavy Euro worker it's, placement it's, game that is yeah. very, very tight. Resources and like the things you need to do and you need to go down all of these tracks equally and halfway through the game, there's always the, there is no way I can do any of this. I can't right. do any of this. There's no possible way. And you always end up doing it. Every That's single great. time you end up doing it, which is a very Vladimir Suki thing to do. He yeah. makes this, he makes things like Prague, uh, Prague, but Regni, which came out last year. If Same it wasn't so new, I'd say that's underrated because I don't hear enough people talking about yeah, it. Yeah, it's true. But that's another game where like halfway through, you're like, how am I going to do all this? And you always end up being able to do it. I don't know what that wizard they does, make, they make but he's real good at that. games. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so, so, so good. It's just the theme is great. The light theme kind of keeps you going in that heavy game. It's my second favorite game. I absolutely adore it. I love it so, so much. And not enough people talk about it. It makes me sad. Agreed. But that's why it's our number four. Yeah. Fantastic game. Obviously, it's well-respected, but it's just not talked about enough. So let's get to number three. Our number three is another kind of Euro game that I hadn't even heard of until our good friend yeah. got it for uh, me for my birthday. And that is Crown of Amara. Right. Um, this is actually another game where you have two scores. And um, your lower of those two scores is your score. You want a game. high score this, this time. This one you want a high score, but, but you same have to sort do of need to balance both those things equally, basically. Right. Um, and this is a kind of a, it's like a double rondelle game. You have yeah. like the countryside board and then like the city side board, and you have like a counselor on each side, and then they're going around those two rondelles. And on your turn, you're playing a card into like a movement slot on your little board, and that's how much your counselor can move. You can move either one. The countryside is where you get resources. You're getting you're getting like wheat, you're getting stone, you're getting wood, you're getting pants. And on the other side, you're spending all those resources to essentially go up those two tracks. There's like a yeah. citizen track and like a building track, because right. Euro stuff, right? So very standard fare. Very, very standard fare. But this game is such a tight resource management oh, game. I mean, it, the resources are not abundant and you really have to work hard to be able to go up these tracks. And again, you have to do the tracks equally. And it's just so, so much fun. And the, the way you, the cards that you play in those, those um, movement slots also have different things on them, give you resources, give you actions and stuff. And it just, it works really, really well. And the double rondelle is just so hard to like, okay, I need to go around two spots on this one, but to do that, I need more wood. So I need to go three spots on this one first. And it, it just, it yeah, it's messes with your mind. It's a spatial puzzle. Yeah, it's really good though. I absolutely love it. Again, shout out to Crook for getting it for my birthday because I had never even heard of it. And then he's like, yeah, I heard this game's good and you like this Euro trash. And I was just like, all right, cool, it you is. know? Yeah, and it's really no, good. It's, it's really good. It's fantastic. Tight, tight, tight game. Uh, so yeah, so that's definitely one that hurts. You're just like, oh do some money. Yeah. You know, but it's very fantastic. There's a lot of like good ways to play. They say like, hey, if you're, if you've played it a few times, try this yeah. thing or try that thing. You can mix up. So now it's not just countryside and just city. You can mix that up yeah. if you want to like hurt your head more. We have not gotten to any of that. I'm like, I'm good. It's hard. Uh, but yeah, it's a fantastic game that I think like maybe suffers a bit from being generically oh, so, Euro game so dry, yeah. You know, but we really like it and we don't mind dry Euro games. And so we're like, this is good. It yeah. should be a little it's, more it's a wise. bucket. It's a bucket of sand dry. It's, yeah. there's no It's the joke we all. always make, but I think it's really fantastic still. And yeah. so just not quite sure why it doesn't get talked about more. Yeah, some people like we it. don't hear people yeah, talking but, about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's our number three, Crown of Amara. Ciao. Get number two. Number two is one that is just perplexingly underplayed and talked about. But it also is kind of Crown of Mar generic. It's the most generic name with the most generic theme. It's called Tales of Glory. What does that mean, Mike? Yeah, I don't know. No one knows. Uh, this is one that I think got in its own way a little bit. A buddy of ours said, because it's a tile laying game, so yeah. you should call it Tiles of Glory. At least, Tiles At of least Glory. At least make it a pun. We used to make it a pun because it's got the nice fun art style, so a nice punny name would work well for but it. But it's I think. generic fantasy, generic, generic fantasy, name. sort it of just... chibi ish art. Um, but it's just kind of like just in a kingdom doing kingdom stuff. Like, but realistically, it's a, spatial, it's a tiling spatial puzzle game. Very simple. Yeah, honestly, if I saw this on a shelf, I probably wouldn't look at it because yeah. of the name, because of like the generic looking theme. But it's so good. Yeah. This is another simultaneous selection yes. game where you are, there's going to be a uh, eight tiles if you're playing in a higher player count or six in a lower in front of you and you're each going to get one and you're going to choose a card to play if you want number one you'll get number one or whatever and uh you're hoping to be the only person that selects your number because if you are then you get your tile but if nick and i chose the same one if nick is closer to first in player count or the first player nick gets it and i have to wait till everyone else gets their tile and then, and then i get to choose from, from what's left over uh from the couple that are left over and it's um 
just really fun to try to kind of sort of specialize, I guess, in that game yeah. because there's a lot of tiles and stuff that will reward you if you've kind of been playing a lot of like the blue tiles, which are like characters and stuff, or there's like treasure rooms and things and monsters. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of specialize and you just build out it's going big up tableau. and around the side this big tableau in front of you. And every and time you're certain tiles, stuff, tiles will want to be next to other yeah, tiles. Yeah, they'll trigger bonuses if yeah, you put them exactly. in the right space. There's like tiles that have chests on them so they need to make little key connections yeah. and then you get a key connection you can open a chest which gives you more resources yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And it's super fast. Yes. It's like 10 turns and out. I mean, yeah. it's very it's quick. It's like 30, 45 minutes. Plays up to five. Maximum. It's really great at all player counts. Because everything's simultaneous. Yeah. And then at the end you'll, you'll have been scoring these little crowns throughout those are your points. You have some kind of awards. You've got the most potions or have the most money and stuff like that. You, you need to kind of manage some resources, but it's super simple. It's yeah. like kind of manage your resources, have a couple little things you can do, but you're really just trying to build out that tableau. Yeah. And we think it's just really fantastic. And it goes over so every single person we, can, we do. They goes like, Man, that was really good. We're like, I know, right? I yeah. know. Like, it just moves well. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. just it's, doesn't ever say it's welcome. No, it's it's so good. Yeah, it's a perfect length for exactly what it is, and that's why we're like, this should be do this should do better because they really executed on the what this game is, knowing what it wants to be, yes. being how that, long it wants to be, all exactly. these things. Yeah, and we're like, man, they executed. I think they should just re -theme it. They should have been a bolder, bolder theme or bolder yeah. anything. Just, just have, choose a new. Different, just anything, just anything. Nowadays, like something with a different theme tends to get noticed. Can people go like, oh, cool, that's a different theme. I've never seen that theme. Build just, a mythical mall. And you have different things in the sure. mall in different areas. Exactly. Oh, something, know. anything but really, really goofy. Different. It's just like it's such a generic name and such a generic yeah. theme. And the art's fine and stuff like that, but it's just like, it just doesn't pop because of everything. I'm just like, man, yeah. it's, it's a real shame because the game is great. It's a dang shame, I say. But yeah. that's our number two. We still have one that we think should be talked about more. We'll get to it now. Time for number one. Number one. What is it, Nick? It goes for continent. It goes for our continent. That's great. Now, luckily, this is a John DeClaire game that just got an expansion. It did just get an expansion. So it's not like, you know, been left in the dust no, and here's by the thing. AG, I don't which is fantastic. People know about this game. A lot of people have played this game. It's slightly divisive. It is like device. It should be slightly 100% loved. It though. should be 100% loved. I I think Ecos is such an incredible game that it ultimately is it's pretty so fun. <laughs> darn simple. Like yeah. it's a very simple game when you get down to it, but there's so many realms of strategy. So basically what it is, you have this continent that you're building out. Everyone's building on the same continent. It's land and water. Yeah, it's like it's like, it's like grasslands and deserts and then water and basically. And then you're playing these cards, and these cards are gonna manipulate the continent. Uh, in many different ways. You can add more stuff. Sometimes you can change certain things to other things. And then you also are constantly putting out these animals, all different kinds of animals, uh, basically all African animals. So you put out like yeah. elephants, or like crocodiles in the water, or like sharks in the water, or like gazelles or giraffes or a whole bunch of different animals. And then these cards will be like, put down an elephant tile and then for every elephant tile in that group, which means they're in adjacent it's hexes, you'll get a amount of points. And so you're trying to get the continent to kind of look how you want it to look, but everyone else is also trying to get it to look how like they want to look. Mm -mm, I want trees. And like all the cards, there's a ton of cards and they're all different. Every single yeah. one is different. And some are having to put down trees and mountains or, Someone's giving all... you bonus resources. There's a there's a, a good amount of ability to chain together the yes. different action cards and like trigger one, which triggers the next, and sort of cascades. And it's just really cool. It's kind it of like works almost engine building in this way. So it is. It, it is an engine builder, and it works so darn well. Yeah. And just I feel like no one talks about it. No one ever plays it. And, and it just got an expansion. The expansion also is great. Yeah. It's wonderful. And it, I mean, guess it was it did well enough to get an expansion, which is great. Yeah. But I feel like this should be one of the biggest games out there and it's just not yeah i think it's so solid i think the theming and the, and the way that you're all kind of building this collective landscape is really different and fascinating i personally like the bingo style of pulling out a thing and oh, seeing if great. you can make use of it because if you can't or don't want to make use of the sun symbol you can do a little bit of mitigation get more cards play more cards out give you more options there's always something things. to do yeah there's always something to do um yeah, and the, and the ability to kind of combo build and get get things set up. And there's different types of cards, some of which are kind of good to kind of build things up. And then there's these like kind of cards that are meant to score once you have things the way you like it. Yes. Uh, and so finding out that timing and everything, there's always, I think, abilities for everyone in the game will have like a big move where you do really some sort turn. of series yeah. of things where like, ooh, man, that was impressive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's one of those that, again, we think obviously it's done not horribly because no. they did get an expansion. The expansion's great as well. Um, but 
I just think it's so much better than people give it credit for, at least that we hear talk about it. If you know Ecos and play it, let us know, because I feel like there's none of y'all out there. Where you at? Where you at? Shoot. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know, we, we love it. We love it so, 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 so much. And yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just, doesn't seem to get onto people's tables a lot. Get after it. Ecos is great. Uh, but that's our list, everybody. That's our list, yeah. That's the first part anyway. That's 10. Like I said, Underrated games are one that I feel like everyone in their collection has games. You're like, no one else likes this but me. Yeah. So we have plenty more we could talk about uh, if people are interested in seeing that. Again, if you are, give us a thumb up to let us know you're interested and we'll do another list uh, at some point in the future. Uh, also, now's the time. We need to know your most underrated games. Put them in the comments yeah. below. Whether it's one or 10, make your own list. We love seeing that. Let us know what games you think are underrated. Because again, this is just our opinion of games that are underrated. Yeah. And those are going to be very different than yours. So we want to know what your tastes are out there. So let us know. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So the end of every top 10, we like to have our patrons scroll by because patrons make it so we can do stuff. everything. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it's a huge, huge part of what we do. And so we want to thank our patrons, and you can see them all right here. Um, and thank you just so much for supporting us. And it's just been, I don't know, it just warms my heart every day, basically. Right. Thank you to our patrons. Speaking of money stuff, we have a Kickstarter. Yeah. It's probably, unless you're watching this today, it comes out. It's going on right now. Yeah. You should support it because yeah. this studio, and you see this background, Nick? This background's gonna change because yeah. we are leaving this room. Everything yeah. you've seen the last two years that we filmed has been in this very particular one uh, bedroom of a two bedroom apartment. And we are moving into a house that I bought and building our new studio in our garage. Yeah. And you can help us uh, support yeah. and also fund us for season five yeah. of the Brothers Murph. We're about to complete our fourth year, if you can believe I know. It. It's it's pretty wild. Yeah, so the Kickstarter is starting on July 24th. So if you're watching this today, it comes out. It'll be tomorrow. Come on but, yeah. but nonetheless, yeah, if, if you can't throw a dollar or two at it, that'd be really, really cool. we got some cool stuff going on. Absolutely. Yeah. We have our own fan-made uh, version of Unmatched that is blessed by Restoration Games. Right. They even helped us create this deck. So yeah. it's going to be on the level. Yeah. Uh, you can check out all our stuff at our Kickstarter page. So there'll be a link uh, in the description of this video for that. Indeed. Um, yeah, and that's it. Uh, I guess we'll see y'all later. We'll see y'all later. Bye. 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 God, what a great list. <laughs> what a you great You know what I say list. about that list? That list is underrated. Underrated list, underrated channel, underrated fans. Absolutely underrated. The most underrated fans. Y'all the best. Uh, if you want to see another top 10 we did, it'll be right over there. If you click down here, it'll be a fantastic Brothers Murph video oh gosh, for you. So Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell notification so you know when we have videos coming live. Yeah. Bye, everybody.